getting wild in here, guys. It's wild. Hey guys, it's Marianne. Welcome back to Handmade. So, like, you know, all of us, I spend a fair amount of time on the internet, particularly Instagram, Pinterest, and lately, my like new guilty pleasure, TikTok. Now, I am hardly the first person to test out viral TikTok trends on, on YouTube or even on this channel. I mean, Liz tested out that crazy plastic wrap iron-on hack. Gabby has tested a couple of art hacks. And when I saw this particular trend pop up on Instagram, on Pinterest, and then it finally made an appearance on TikTok, I knew I had to try it. Have you guys seen it? It's one where you take spray paint and dirt and you can turn a kind of plain, boring vessel into a like aged earthenware, like pottery farmhouse dream. I mean, I've got spray paint. I've got dirt. You know, how could I say no? But before we get to our spray painting, we have to pick out some vessels. Now, I've seen people do everything from coffee cans to old glass vases, um, planters. Sky's really the limit, so I thought it might be fun if I show you guys my prop closet. Yes, I have a prop closet. Is that weird? Don't answer that. Okay, so. Let's go check out my prop closet, AKA the place where I stash things I don't really need. It's right next to my jungle bathroom. Jungle bathroom. Anyway, my prop closet. It's where I keep just things I wanna hang on to, stuff I wanna use for styling, candles, seasonal stuff. Let's see, what could we use for this project? I feel like that's a good candidate, this planter. What if I made this little snail guy look like he was made of stone? Hmm. I've always liked the shape of this. Hmm, that might be a good one. Ooh. Now this is my office where I have all my craft supplies. But this lamp, I actually brought up here because I don't really like this clear base. Would that work? Okay, so we're back from our prop closet adventure and we've got some really good candidates. I haven't decided if I'm painting everything yet. I'm still on the fence with this one. Um, but I definitely, this is a planter that came with an orchid. Let's do like a moment of silence for the orchid that once lived inside this planter. And I'm not even sure why I held on to it, but I think it's the perfect thing to try with this because it's definitely not worth anything. Same with this little snail. I've had this for so long and I'm not sure why. <laughs> I'm not sure why I kept it. But, you know, if I could make it look like stone, maybe you get some like moss to grow on it. I don't know, it might be cute. But I think I am most excited about this lamp. So I've held on to this lamp because I like the shape, but I've never liked this clear glass. I always kind of wished that it was like pottery or, you know, something just with like a little more personality. And I have to say, I've seen a lot of these tutorials with the spray paint in the dirt, I don't think I've ever seen someone try a lamp. So this could go great or it could fail spectacularly. I mean, that's why you guys are here, right? At this point. So now all that's left to do is to go outside and paint. Except I'm not really wearing painting appropriate clothing. So let's see, let's stash all my goodies. My spray paint, and I just need to. All right, I think now we're ready to go paint. 
Okay, so we're outside and before we start spray painting, we need to prep our surfaces. And I've put down some cardboard to protect your surface. And honestly, it might rain. So we're just gonna try to get one coat on before we have a potential weather delay. I'm just going to wipe everything down with a rag to get off any dirt or schmutz. And in the case of the lamp, I'm gonna use some painter's tape to tape off the parts that I don't want to paint. All right, everything is all prepped. So let's talk about paint. So almost all of the tutorials I looked at recommended flat paint. So I went into my stash and I grabbed neutral colors. I think these will look the most like stone and will work best with the, you know, dirt treatment. I also grabbed, of course, black. And this one is satin, but I just thought this color was really pretty. I thought it would be kind of terracotta. So I grabbed it too. And the key is you just want to give everything a nice, light, even coat. You don't want drips because the dirt will highlight the drips. And it's probably going to take two or three coats to get it opaque. You want to let it dry completely in between. So let's start painting. Oh, and we have a late addition to the game. I decided not to paint the green vase. Um, I just, I like the green color. So instead, I am gonna try painting this tin can. I mean, this literally had tomatoes in it this morning. That is going to be the fourth in our experiment. All right, now it is really time to start painting. All right, for the lamp, I am just going to go with black. All right, we're gonna let this coat dry completely Completely, and then we are going to give it a second coat. If you get any drips, I've got kind of, uh, it's hard to see, but there's a little drip right there. You can lightly sand it off, but yeah, we're just gonna let that dry for a couple of hours. Our tin can, this really is our experiment because we're going to try the satin paint for this one in this terracotta color. And I should probably put gloves on. Famous last words, right? All right, this planter is going to get a coat of this olive green. Why do I have camouflage spray paint? Who knows? You know what I'm really learning is I love spray paint. And last but not least, Mr. Snail is going to get a coat of this stone color. And he is the hardest to pick up, so he is just going to sit right there. All right, we're gonna let these guys dry for an hour and then give them a second coat. And we are just going to like pray that it doesn't rain. All right, we've had to move on to the porch because of weather. So I'm just gonna give everything a second coat of spray paint and then I'm going to let it dry completely. And honestly, because it's kind of humid out, I'm probably just gonna let it dry overnight. So. Everything's had a chance to dry completely overnight. So now it's finally time to smear things with mud. It's like the moment we've been waiting for, right? But first, let's talk briefly about dirt. I tried to find a couple different colors. So here we have like a really black topsoil. Ooh, it's dusty, y'all. Now this was really rocky and had a lot of debris in it, so I actually sifted it first. I feel like I'm panning for gold. My job is weird. Um, and then here we have what's more like a red clay here um, in East Tennessee where I live. We have a lot of this stuff. It's actually a really pretty kind of rusty red color. Terrible for trying to grow vegetables, but maybe it'll be good for a craft project. And then I had another idea last night. I wondered if you took some natural clay and dissolved it in water and made kind of like a slurry, if that would also give a similar effect. I like the really light color of this. I think it could look really pretty. Plus, you know, why not? Let's experiment, right? 
I think I'm gonna start with this little snail. Um, and I think for this one, I am gonna try the clay first. Gloves are optional, obviously. This is just dirt. But you probably wanna protect your surfaces. And I put an apron on just because I already managed to splash bleach on this shirt in a video. So, you know, let's try to preserve the clothing a little bit. All right, so I'm just taking a little bit and I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to smush this around in the water. So as you can see pretty quickly, that has just made a gloop milky mess. All right, and now we're just going to glop, oh, look at that. We're just gonna glop this on. Don't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get in all like the nooks and crannies. All right, so now we're gonna set that aside and set this aside. I'm actually gonna go rinse these off real quick. Okay, so now I think we'll grab the red clay looking dirt and I think I'm going to try it on this olive green. So again, we're just going to moisten it. Um, all right, and now we're just going to smear this on. Oh, this is kind of fun, guys. I don't know. I'm just going to... Glop it on. It doesn't take a lot of dirt. And you feel like it's pretty well covered. Um, you want to let these dry overnight before the next step. This is quickly turning into one of those projects that I thought I was going to be able to do in an afternoon, and I'm now on day three. So, yeah, I really need to like look at my life. Okay, and um, now I'm going to do our and can I think I'm gonna do the dark the dark dirt for this oh, I might have gotten this too liquidy um, ooh, I don't even know this is not behaving like dirt it's real it's real gloopy um, honestly wondering because I took this dirt from a flower bed I'm kind of wondering if it's actually like broken down compost or mulch because it's really dark and it's just not behaving like, like mud. Again, really making this up as I go along, but I just want a really good layer on there so we have the best chance. Oh, this was the satin paint. Do you guys remember? Oh, so long ago, earlier in the video, where I said that the tutorials called for matte paint, but I liked this color and it was satin. I think we maybe discovered why. Um, it's not really wanting to stick to the paint. We're just gonna set that over there and move on to the lamp. I think I'm most excited about the lamp. Okay, there we go. And for the lamp, I'm gonna do a combination. Getting wild in here, guys. It's wild. Um, I actually really like how this lamp turned out just spray painted. So if all else fails, I guess maybe I can wash off this dirt and give it another coat of spray paint and pretend this never happened. <laughs> it's so gross. I'm kind of into it though, to be honest. I'm making a huge mess. Okay, so now all of these need to dry overnight. Um, and then tomorrow, hopefully, we will finish it off. See if it worked. Maybe I should have done this outside. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. Uh, that's kind of gross. Hang on to your dirt because if it 
doesn't look quite how you want tomorrow, you can put, oh God, it's so gross. You can put another layer of dirt on the outside. So hang on to your dirt, see you tomorrow. All right, after drying overnight, we've got this, a muddy, muddy mess. Okay, so for those of you playing along at home, this is now day four of this project, which I genuinely thought I could do in one day. Joke's on me. All right, so we've let everything dry overnight and now it's time for the final step of this project. But first off, I wanna tell you right out of the gate, the clay didn't work. Guess what? The clay just hardened to clay. It's not going anywhere. It's not brushing off. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this little guy, to be honest. I may just spray paint him again later and start over depending on how this goes. And right here we have our tin can. And you remember I used satin paint for this one and I was like, I don't know if this will work. Well, I don't know if it worked, but oh man, I think all that we can do now is just start brushing the dirt off. The two tutorials I found didn't really elaborate on how to do that. One said just use like a rag or a cloth. One said that they used a brush to brush it off. Um, oh man, I can tell you right now, this is like gonna be insanely messy. So I'm gonna put my apron on and grab a rag and we're just gonna see what we can do. Okay, I'm gonna start with the lamp because I feel the most confident about the lamp. I don't know where that confidence is coming from really. And I've grabbed just an old rag and I also grabbed this brush. I thought it might help me get in some of these little like nooks and crannies. I'm just gonna start rubbing the dirt off. Rag before. Gently put in this crevice here. All right, set that guy aside, and then we're gonna tackle this one. I put this on way, way too thick. The lamp worked so well. This one, I don't know what it is. But the dirt is just not, it is just not budging. And this is the one that I used just the red clay on. And I think the clay has just like adhered. I'm just gonna set that guy aside. Um, oh yeah. So as predicted, the dirt is just wiping off completely. Like it's not, it's not sticking, it's not sticking to that paint at all. I think we can officially call using satin spray paint a bust. All right, so what have we learned? We've learned that red clay, even though it's a pretty color, it's just, well, it's clay. Clay doesn't work in this project. You really need dirt. So if you have dirt, it has a really high clay content, you may want to try to track down some topsoil or some garden soil because this, this may be a bust. What else did we learn? The kind of spray paint you use matters. Matte spray paint has texture that grabs on to the dirt, whereas this satin spray paint the dirt rubs off of it completely, so we don't get that aged look. But I'm actually pretty excited because I think this lamp looks really cool. Like, it went from a very cheap, boring, plain, clear glass lamp to something that looks like, like pottery or earthenware. So I'm just going to clean up all of this 
please pray. And then we're going to take the tape off, put the lampshade on and see my new lamp. I was really worried that this would shed a lot of dirt or dust, but everything that's left seems to be like pretty well adhered to the lamp. So now let's just remove our painter's tape. Let's just grab the shade. Boom, there you have it. I am honestly impressed. I really had, I wouldn't say low expectations, but I also wouldn't say I had high expectations. And this just looks so cool. I'm gonna plug it in, plug it in. And I mean, guys, this was like a $10 lamp that I never really liked. And now I feel like it looks, I don't know, really like, high-end and cool. I mean, am I crazy or did this totally work? All in all, I would say spending four days and completely covering my kitchen in a fine layer of dirt was mostly worth it. I kind of think this is a really cool technique. And now I really want to try it using the right kind of dirt and the right kind of spray paint on some smaller vessels, planters, maybe a vase. But now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Were you as skeptical as I was about combining spray paint and dirt and trying to pass it off with some kind of fine art? Or did you always have faith in me? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. And I don't know, tell me some more crazy, you know, processes that you guys have tried to age things or distress things or just generally make something kind of basic look really cool and custom. I am going to go find the perfect spot for my new lamp. I'll see you guys next time.